Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome again so today what we will discuss we will discuss a producer or more specifically a profit maximizing producer if he or she goes to operate in a competitive product market. So, so I am a producer I have to face two types of markets one is called factors market another is called product market. So, today onwards next uh, 5, 6 lectures what we will discuss a competitive producer given the factor markets what he or she is facing if he faces a perfect, perfectly competitive kind of uh, product market what will be his or her optimum quantity decision quantity of what output quantity decision ok. Vis a vis if he operates in a uh, monopoly kind of product market what will be his optimum quantity of output decision and so on we will discuss right. So, all these things so we will discuss in your in your book you will see that chapter uh, 14, chapter 15, chapter 15, uh, 16 all these chapters are basically each chapter devote for say oh, chapter 14 is for competitive market, chapter 15 is a monopoly like that all these things are basically under the Satterish Paribas condition given the technology side or factor markets given at some uh, some fixed level ok or whatever for factor market this producer is facing with the same factor market and same technology production technology if he pro whatever he is producing if he wants to go to sell that product in a competitive product market what will be his optimum output decision. Alternatively in the next chapter chapter number 15 we will discuss the same producer if instead of competitive product market he goes to a monopoly kind of product market what will be his optimum output decision and so on right. So, as we told uh, so, technology whatever a production technology the nature of technical know how nature of knowledge level to convert into inputs into out convert the inputs into output ok. So, that technology's representation we have uh, we have drawn a uh, few cost curves ok total cost curve and few other cost curves which are derived from the mother total cost curve if you can remember average total cost, average variable cost if it is a it is a short run case ok then marginal cost, average fixed cost again in the short run case and so on right. So, given that cost structure ok if the uh, that producer faces a competitive kind of or perfectly competitive kind of product market what will be his optimum quantity decision that we are discussing now ok this is in chapter 14 of the book we are following ok. So, competitive market, competitive ok. So, perfectly competitive market, perfectly competitive say more specifically product market whatever product the producer is producing with that product if you wants to sell that product in a market which is perfectly competitive in nature then what will be his production decision or optimum output decision ok. So, before that let us define uh, what we are referring by this perfectly competitive market ok. So, two essential criteria is there for a market to be perfectly competitive ok. One is say largeness and two is the homogeneity. ok. By largeness what we are referring? By largeness we are referring that in this kind of market. So, a market will be competitive or will be called a perfectly competitive market if these two essential criteria that is market satisfies ok. One criteria is largeness. By largeness what we are referring? In this market a large number of buyers as well as large number of sellers are there. Many buyers and many sellers are there 
right. So, when you are going one clarification when you are going to write that or tell that to someone right, do not mention this largeness as if the uh, infinitely many uh, producers are there or infinitely many consumers are there. See, here large number of buyers and large number of sellers what we are telling whatever large it is those are finite not infinite many do not. So, do not why I am telling that because student has a tendency to tell that infinite many uh, buyers are there or infinite many uh, sellers are there do not use or try to avoid that terminology infinite right. So, large number of buyers many buyers are sellers uh, and many sellers are there both buyers and number of buyers are large as well as number of sellers are large. What is the implication of this largeness? Since the large number of buyers are there and large number of share sellers are there, not a single buyer or not a single seller have any worthwhile or significant control over the uh, equilibrium price quantity what will be determined in that market. Okay. Then, what is the how that equilibrium price and hence quantity is determined in that market? Of course, what is the market demand and market supply force? So, so many lar so large number of buyers are there. So, large number of buyers if we if we add each of them each of their individual demand curve this kind of market demand curve is there. Exactly the same way large number of sellers are there if we if we horizontally aggregate each of their individual supply curve this kind of market supply curve we will get. So, this S is the supply curve D is the demand curve of course, we are measuring quantity demanded and quantity supplied in the horizontal axis and price in the vertical axis as usual right. So, with this demand supply force in the market this equilibrium price will be determined and every consumer will buy that product at this OP star price level and every seller will sell that product also at OP star price level in that market. Okay. Not any single buyer or not any single seller can influence this price level. Okay. So, so, say suppose, uh, suppose say I am a single seller right. Suppose uh, and since large number of sellers are there and I am I occupy a negligible fraction of the entire market sold or market supply amount right. So, I have effectively no control on the market supply overall market supply very negligible control right. So, now the suppose this is the equilibrium price level in that market determined by overall demand supply forces in that prevails in that market right. Now, suppose being a single individual seller if I want to set my price uh, in my, my, my shop right product price of that product is little bit above of this OP star what will happen or if I want to sell that product little bit price little bit below OP star what will happen okay, that I am coming to that. Before that let us discuss by homogeneity what we are referring. In this market another essential criteria is that each seller and each buyer they are selling or they are transacting with a commodity or with a service which is homogeneous in nature. So, homogeneous product, homogeneous product. So, homogeneous means what? In economics by homogeneous product we are referring two units of the same product are identical. Okay. Say suppose let me give you an example say suppose there is a company uh, which produce bath soap uh, that brand name called Vivel. Okay. Many of you know perhaps you are also a consumer of that soap right. Now, suppose Vivel uh, one soap is golden color another bar is say blue color. Okay. Both the soap are otherwise identical by otherwise identical what we are referring other than these two different colors all other aspects whatever you can think of they are same like the nature the, the, the looking of the packaging weight of each bar smell of each bar okay then quality of the bar to these two bars everything are same only one dimension they are different one is golden color another is blue color even those two uh, bars of the same Vivel product right are not homogeneous uh, product 
they are differentiated product. So, in economics by homogeneous product we are referring two units of the same product okay, are identical in every aspects whatever you can think of in every possible criteria whatever you can think of. So, that kind of commodity we are called we are terming as homogeneous product. Okay, yes, it is very difficult in real life okay, that a homogeneous product is there, okay. but agricultural commodities you can think of. Okay. Say, give, say, suppose a particular uh, specific, say in, in South India, one, one uh, uh, rice is very popular, say, ponni rice, right, ponni rice. Says, uh, suppose ponni boiled rice. Okay. So, it is a one variety one quality and everything is same. Okay. So, ponni boiled rice whatever is, is sold in the market A in Chennai city and the same commodity what is sold in the market B in Chennai city and so on market A market B we are, we are referring in certain location geographical location of the same Chennai city in that sense okay. not different product market. Okay. Same product in one market another market what is sold all are basically homogeneous product. Okay. Okay. So, those are the homogeneous products. So, in which context I was telling homogeneous product in real life, okay, uh, it is very difficult to find homogeneous product, but uh, let us see this uh, at the end of this, uh, this uh, course, right, you will realize that uh, perfectly competitive market uh, in fact uh, do, does not exist in real life. Okay. Then the question is why we are starting with perfectly competitive market. So, we are hypothesizing, we are, we are assuming this kind of character of a market okay, per, and terming the market as perfectly competitive market. So, if we understand the market mechanism how the demand or how the equilibrium price is determined okay, and how uh, what factors that uh, influence a uh, uh, profit maximizer producers decision making and all right in the competitive market when we will go by subsequent more closer uh, real life market right the markets which are more closer to real life like monopoly market, oligopoly market, monopolistic competitive market one by one we will go to those, those markets right. It will be very easy to understand for you how the equilibrium in those markets which are very close in real life situation. Okay. It will be very easy for you to understand what will be the equilibrium mechanism in those markets okay. and how, how these factors actually determine uh, equilibrium uh, on in those kinds of markets. Right. Uh, so, that is why we, we, are, we are taking, the, we are starting with uh, perfectly com competitive kind of market. So, so, in this market two criteria, two essential criteria is there, large number of buyers and large number of sellers are there and buyers and sellers are interacting among themselves with a homogeneous kind of product. And another, another uh, say uh, property is there free entry and free exit, free entry and free exit. free entry free exit you can easily understand. So, this kind of market anybody, anybody is free to, so there is no uh, entry restriction in this kind of market. Okay. Anybody uh, say I, I am a new producer, okay. I, I want to also produce the, that same homogeneous commodity, okay. it is, nobody will create any obstacle to me to produce that product and come to this market to sell my product. Okay. Exactly same for any customers also. So, anybody, any seller or any buyer can freely enter into the market and also can freely exit in the market whenever he or she is willing to do so. Okay. So, now look at here since it is an homogeneous market, right? So, a homogeneous products uh, market, right? So, if say, suppose this is the market equilibrium uh, price determined by the demand curve and supply curve in the market, right? Now, suppose I am a single producer, right? So, if I want to set my price or price or uh, price of that commodity in my shop little bit above of that OP star price, what will happen? Okay. So, since this information is known to everybody, right, and what is the equilibrium price? No, the customers will quickly move from your shop to another shop. Okay. So, demand for your product from your shop will be coming to zero. Nobody will come to you to purchase the product from your shop. Okay. 
alternatively if I want to see look under the satirical previous condition we are assuming that when I am setting price little bit above than the market equilibrium price we are assuming that none of the other sellers are setting or are deviating from this price level what is determined in that price in that market right that set of this previous uh, condition is is prevailing there okay so, okay so exactly the same way alternatively if i want to set my price a little bit lower what will happen then the equilibrium price then the op star price level what is determined in this market what will happen the entire custom all the customers of the market will come to me okay so as a result what kind of demand for my product will be there in that market so so I, what i am trying to make you understand that as a single producer what is the demand curve before me demand curve, curve before me means we are referring that see i am a seller right i am a potential seller i am producing some product and I, with that product i am entering into this market right with the hope that some customer will be there who will be willing to consume or buy my product right so i have to also bother that what kind of demand for my product is there in the market if there is no demand for my product right so perhaps as a rational seller or rational producer i will not try to produce that product at all right so that is the thing so as a rational producer rational pro profit maximizer i have to bother what is the demand situation or demand scenario for my product in the market where i am going to sell my product right of course, my, my cost structure we are we are assuming that under the set of this kind of thing, no, some given cost structure I am discussing my or uh, that producers optimum decision in a competitive product market, right. So, first I have to know that product market where I am going to operate, right, what kind of demand for my product is there in that product. So, when we are telling, when we are referring that what is the demand curve of my product, it is basically how much customers or what kind of uh, demand situation cost potential customers are placing for my product in that market. Okay? So, if we discuss that way, we, we, if we think of in that way or try to understand that way, right? what we can get? Of course, suppose this is the market equilibrium price okay? determined by the demand supply market demand supply mechanism okay? say OP star. Okay, price this side and quantity demanded quantity supplied in that side horizontal axis we are measuring okay, and price in the vertical axis as, as usual. Okay. So, of course, if I want to set price anything above OP star what will be the demand for my product in the market definitely 0 nobody will come to me right. So, my demand curve will be this the vertical axis itself my demand curve will coincide will coincides uh, will coincide with the vertical axis. Okay. If I want to set this price, what is the equilibrium price uh, determined in the market? Okay. As much commodity I want, I will I will be able to sell. Now, if I want to set my my price little bit lower than this equilibrium price level, what whatever is there? Okay. So, we are telling that because under the set of this peribus condition by under the set of this peribus condition we are referring that when I am trying to reduce the uh, price in my shop right no other shop owners are, re are, are reducing or are following my, me are re they are not reducing their price they are following the same price level of star. So, we are telling the entire market entire customers all the customers of the market will come to my, my shop right. So, that time how much demand for uh, my product will be there in the market? Definitely the entire industry's demand curve. So, demand this kind of demand curve. Look at here this demand curve, this supply curve, this is the industry demand, this is the industry supply, entire market demand, entire market supply curve, right. So, in that case, this entire market demand curve I will enjoy. Okay. So, if I ask myself, okay, so so definitely my demand curve will be this kind of this kind of uh, so this this so this is the segment of market demand curve market dd curve okay so in your book it is written that 
uh, in a competitive market producer face a demand curve which is horizontal right so this diagram is clarifying its horizontal yes horizontal but not this side how how far it will go okay it's not infinite distance right so horizontal but until that much at that price level at the existing price level how much demand for the entire market is there okay not beyond that okay so one single producer's demand curve this 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 okay one single producer's demand curve means demand for his product okay in that sense okay that then when in your book or so many other books whatever available in the market you will see that they are telling that demand curve is horizontal in this market by horizontal what they are referring because since every producer is very small relative to the entire market size right because large number of sellers are there right so effectively perhaps one single seller okay occupies only this much small fraction of the entire uh, market demand right so that is why effectively this this small fraction if we if we stretch effectively it's an horizontal demand curve so implication as if at the existing price level whatever quantity i would as a single producer i would uh, want to produce i can produce and i can uh, there will not be any uh, any difficulty to get enough customers for my product no okay so that i clarified we already clarified that no that is not the case of course at that price maximum amount of customers i can get that at that price how much customers are there in the entire market not beyond that okay that's the thing okay so that's the demand curve so now onwards whenever we are going to discuss the equilibrium condition in this this kind of market or optimum output decision of a profit maximizing producer who is operating in this kind of product market right what will be his equilibrium right so when we are going to discuss that okay we will assume that demand curve is this kind of horizontal okay because effectively although i face this green color of demand curve for my product effectively my demand curve is horizontal only because i i i occupy or my share of the entire market is very negligible fraction of this entire market demand at that price level okay okay so so now let us let us put that so basically the price level so if i want to produce this much whatever price i will face per unit of the output if i produce little bit more same price i will face per unit of output okay so depending on output decision whether zero unit i am going to produce or 5 units 10 units 20 units okay i will face the same price for each of those units in the market right if that is the case if that is the case what will be my total revenue my total revenue will be definitely price into quantity since price is independent of what how much quantity i am going to produce right two units five units 10 units as we have we have shown here right demand curve is horizontal that means does not depend on how much quantity i am producing right e for each unit of my product i will get the same price right so definitely this price is not a the whatever price i am going to face that is not a function of quantity right so definitely if i take marginal revenue marginal revenue will be del total revenue by del q right in the last lecture we have clarified marginal revenue how we define marginal revenue change in total revenue due to change in quantity production or output change in output right so of course mar to get marginal revenue you have to take partial derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity right so if i do this that will be only p okay that will be only p okay in general it will be uh, p plus q into del p del q okay when because usually demand curve in a downward sloping in this particular case demand demand curve does not depend on quantity it is horizontal right but in general case if it's a, it's a uh it, it's a usual demand curve downward sloping we can tell that price is a function of quantity right in that way this is the this is true always but in the competitive market since price is irres independent of quantity choice 
or producer individual producer quantity choice, this component is 0, del P del Q is 0. So, as a result effectively we are writing P. So, marginal revenue is equal to the price in that in the competitive market, but marginal revenue will not be equal to the price in other market or product market which is not or which are not competitive in nature. Right. So, and and so let us define that average revenue, another concept uh, average revenue, okay, average revenue, okay. Exactly the same way marginal revenue we have defined change in your total revenue due to change in quantity, output quantity, right. So, average revenue will be definitely total revenue by quantity. So, per unit of output how much revenue you are getting. If for every unit of your product, how much revenue you are getting? That is called average revenue. Okay, so average revenue definitely is identical to price because price into quantity. Okay, so total revenue is price into quantity, right? Irrespective of the competitive market, if it is a competitive market, it will not be a function of quantity. Okay, so for competitive market competitive market or perfectly competitive market, okay, this price is not a function of Q. So, we can write price into Q, right. So, average revenue in that case total revenue by Q, so that by Q, okay. So, definitely it will be P, okay. Alternatively, in any market other than uh, competitive market, other kinds of market, right their total revenue will be price as a function of quantity into quantity, right? That is total revenue, okay? So, average revenue will be what? Price in as a function of quantity into quantity by quantity because by definition average revenue is T r by Q, okay? Tot revenue per unit of quantity. So, this Q, this Q cancel out again, this is a price as a function of quantity. So, the price whatever price prevails in a market irrespective of whether it is a competitive market or is a monopoly market or is a, is a other than competitive market right. Price and average revenue are always same. So, we can write in this way average revenue and price they are identical because this is true they are equal this is true irrespective of the market structure in a competitive market that is true monopoly market that is true, oligopoly market that is everywhere, any sort of product market this is always true, okay. So, these kinds of things and if we draw those kinds of curves how then look like? So, whatever average revenue that is price that is marginal revenue in a competitive market. So, if we if we plot this thing if we measure quantity this side right of course, this kind of horizontal line we will get where price is identical to average revenue is equals to marginal revenue in this kind of market. Whatever is price that is identical to average revenue, okay. And in this particular market, price equals to marginal revenue we have derived, right. So, this kind of revenue structure we will get uh, for a producer who is operating in a product market, okay. Let us stop here. In the next video, or next lecture we will discuss that uh, how the optimum quantity decision will be decided because in the past video if you in the past lecture we have de defined or we have derived that for the optimum uh, output decision or to profit maximizing right that producer will make MR equals to MC. So, MR line we get marginal revenue line we get. So, we will now see where is the marginal cost line which is we have already defined those two curves we will now plot in a same diagram okay that will help you to understand the equilibrium condition. Let us stop here.